Staying up to date with developments in the defence domain can be a daunting task. Equipment is bought and sold every day, security situations are fluid, and defence technology is constantly innovating. As Africa's leading defence news portal, Defence Web aims to give you the latest updates on African defence, the South African National Defence Force, and the defence industry. My name is Justin Kroniev, and welcome to the Defence Web podcast. In this week's edition, Aircraft have been acquired for Tunisia's National Guard, Togo's Air Force and Nigeria's Air Force. And a rocket accidentally fires from a parked aircraft in Chad. Smuggling of cigarettes and alcohol is on the rise in South Africa. And Patricia DeLilly defends the Bait Bridge border fence upgrade. The South African Air Force C-130 suffers damage. The SA Military Health Service launches mass coronavirus screening. Operation Nutella claims its first military fatalities. New junior officers join the reserve force. The South African National Defence Force charges supplier over dated ration packs. And V-Craft is awarded tender to manufacture transnetwork boats. In African defence news, Tunisia's National Guard air unit is flying three Bell 429 Global Ranger helicopters, which monitor the country's coastline, amongst others. The Tunisian government announced the helicopters were operational in August 2019. They arrived in Tunisia earlier in the year. This is the first air unit of the National Guard that is equipped with high-quality helicopters worth 17.4 million US dollars, said a government statement. The helicopters aim at monitoring the coastline and road traffic management, as well as providing emergency response and disaster management, including evacuation, the statement added. On 17th April, as the crew of a Chadian Air Force Sukhoi Su-25 was preparing for a mission from the military wing, of N'Djamena Airport, the Chadinian Air Force close air support aircraft accidentally fired a rocket while refueling. The rocket penetrated an empty French Air Force fuel truck, narrowly missed a parked French Air Force C-130H and subsequently hit a nearby house belonging to Deputy Commander of the Presidential Guard, General Mahamata Salaha Brahima, killing three children and two adults. The incident is being labelled as a mistake as an investigation into the circumstances of the incident is underway. The Nigerian Air Force has returned another MR-35P attack helicopter to service after it was locally refurbished. The aircraft, NAF-530, was commissioned during a ceremony at the 115th Special Operations Group in Port Harcourt on the 17th of April marking the second MR-35P to be locally refurbished. The NAF said the MR-35P had been unserviceable since June 2016, with repair work starting from 2018. The first MR-35P was returned to service in May 2018. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abu Bakar, said that the Nigerian Air Force is due to take delivery of 60 new aircraft, including a second MR-171E helicopter, as well as three JF-17 multi-role fighters from Pakistan and 12 Super Tucanos from the United States. The first A-29 Super Tucano light attack and trainer aircraft for the Nigerian Air Force has performed its maiden flight ahead of delivery next year, while the US Air Force prepares to train Nigerian pilots on the aircraft in the coming months. Embraer announced the first flights on 17th of April together with its partner, Sierra Nevada Corporation. Nigerian Super Tucanos are being manufactured at Sierra Nevada Corporation's facility in Jacksonville, Florida, and this is where the maiden flight took place. Embra and Sierra Nevada Corporation said production of all 12 Nigerian Air Force aircraft is underway, with deliveries expected to take place as scheduled in 2021. The NAF A-29 aircraft will now begin mission modification and final testing in Centennial, Colorado. Following final testing before delivery, NAF pilots will train in the aircraft, Embra said. Togo's Air Force has taken delivery of two modernized Gazelle helicopters, but is reporting considering cancelling the contract and not taking delivery of another two on order. Togo ordered four modernized SA-341L1 Gazelle helicopters from France's Sikamak in 2016. 
but the contract was only implemented in 2018 due to delays in securing the export license from the French government. The sale was reconsidered when French President Emmanuel Macron came to power. French magazine Jeune Afrique reported in 2017 that the 20 million euro deal had been approved by France's Interministerial Commission on Arms Export, but was being blocked by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs due to concerns that the helicopters could be used against political opponents or civilian demonstrators. Nevertheless, two gazelles have been delivered. The contract with Sikamak provides for the provision of the helicopters to be armed with 20mm cannons and Westcam electro-optical infrared sensors with laser designators and three years of support. They are also receiving upgraded cockpits with a Garmin GPS. The first two SA-342s were delivered with second-hand Nexta M621 cannons. Delivery of the remaining aircraft is expected by June with the sensors to be integrated in Togo. However, African Aerospace magazine reports that Togo is concerned about further delays and difficulty integrating the sensors. The future of the contract, of which Loma has already paid 80%, is now uncertain, with the Tongalese authorities reportedly considering cancelling it and requesting for reimbursement. Togo had originally expected to take delivery of all four aircraft between July and September of 2019. Lockdown regulations in South Africa have seen an increase in demand for products currently not available, with the National Border Protection tasking reporting half a million rand increase in the value of contraband seized last month compared with March 2019. Statistics from the Joint Operations Division of the South African National Defence Force show contraband, including cigarettes, other tobacco products and alcohol, conservatively valued at 1.07 million rand, was confiscated by patrolling soldiers on South Africa's land borders with Botswana, Swatini, Lesotho, Mozambique and Zimbabwe between 1st and 31st of March. This is 472,000 rand more in rand terms than the previous March. At the same time, it appears lockdown protocols and regulations, whether in South Africa or its neighbours, has not affected the efforts of marijuana smugglers. A patrol from the 4th Artillery Regiment Company doing Operation Corona duty on the Swatini South Africa border reported two successful recent marijuana busts. In the first, marijuana with the mass of 108 kgs and an estimated street value of more than 320,000 was found at Mshaloro. The platoon on patrol saw two suspects crossing the Swatini South Africa border leaving their cargo behind in a successful escape attempt back into the landlocked kingdom. Two days earlier, Section 2 of the same regiment's Alpha Company Platoon 3 was on a planned foot patrol in the Belgrade area when another large stash of marijuana was found. All told, 62 kgs of marijuana with an estimated street value of close to 190,000 rand was seized by the gunners. As per standard operating procedure, the haul will be handed to the police for investigation and disposal. Public Works and Infrastructure Minister Patricia De Lilly maintains the rush job to upgrade 40 kilometres of border fencing adjacent to the Bait Bridge port of entry had its own lessons, as with any construction project. These included, according to a lengthy ministerial statement, short timeframes dealing with the risk of COVID-19 coronavirus and security issues on site. She also notes, as it is widely known, the border fence line has been subject to criminal activities, which resulted in procurement of additional security personnel and deployment of SANDF officials to provide additional security support. The Lilly statement points out one of the interventions required by her department contributing to the national lockdown and its various protocols and regulations was to identify critical areas related to our land borders that needed to be immediately secured to mitigate the spread of the virus both in and out of our country. This saw emergency procurement procedures invoked to ensure work started as soon as possible on the 37 million rand contract with the month completion date set. De Lilly has been roasted by a senior Democratic Alliance MP for approving 20 kilometers of new fencing either side of the Bait Bridge ports of entry and indications are the work will be subject to the scrutiny of the Auditor General. Samantha graham Maria, the party's shadow deputy minister of public works and infrastructure, said the 37 million, almost a million per kilometer cost to erect the fence meant to halt the illegal border crossings, 
meant it was now a washing line between South Africa and Zimbabwe. The Bait Bridge Port of Entry is the only legal access point between the countries. The Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries reports a significant decrease in poaching during the national lockdown, which is attributed to ongoing anti-poaching work, amongst others. In a statement, Minister Barbara Carisi said the dedication of essential staff on high alerts in the Kruger National Park, all other national parks, as well as provincial and municipal game reserves, was a factor. The statement does not provide updated statistics on rhino and other poaching, apart from pointing out how encouraging the decrease in rhino poaching since the beginning of the year is. And in South African National Defence Force news, as public noise around the use of military to bring the coronavirus pandemic under control escalates, it is wise to heed the words of respected defense analyst Helmut Heitman. He points out the presidential letter authorizing the use of more than 73,000 uniformed personnel refers to employment of the National Defense Force rather than deployment. I see this as a case of contingency planning to allow additional troops from any units in any parts of the country to be deployed promptly if needed, without having to jump through the normal hoops required for an internal deployment. This makes sense as it gives considerable flexibility to deal with situations that might arise or even to deploy troops to work within screening terms, he said. The employment appears to be almost the entire SA National Defence Force, as well as a reserve force and auxiliary comprised of volunteers. Reserve force units are on standby. This is another group which might not have received call-up instructions yet. These are those with specialist skills, and they should contact Provincial Reserve Force officers to volunteer their services. This group includes healthcare practitioners, such as nurses and doctors, those with pilots or aviation experience, and qualified chefs, engineers, technical and mechanical, mechanics and seamstresses. One of South African Air Force's C-130 Hercules transport aircraft has suffered from a nose wheel collapse, but damage appears to be limited. The incident happened on 21st April at Air Force Base Watercliffe. The aircraft 405 was apparently starting up for a test flight, and when the number two engine was started, the nose wheel collapsed or retracted unintentionally. Danelle was in the process of getting 405 airworthy with some issues that needed rectifying, apparently including oil pressure in the number two engine. Danelle had hoped to deliver 405 to the SAAF at the end of this month. According to the South African Air Force, the CAAF confirms that one of its C-130 Hercules aircraft stationed at AFB Watercliffe was involved in an incident while the aircraft was stationary. An investigation to determine the cause of the incident is currently underway. The South African Military Health Service launched a mass COVID-19 screening and testing campaign for the military community as part of measures to curb the spread of the virus. This is part of the overall SA National Defence Force's contribution to the government-led effort to flatten the curve of infection. The first venue for the SA Military Health Service screening and testing component was the SA Defence Intelligence College north of Air Force Base Watercliffe on Monday 20th of April. Military Command Council members were screened and tested for coronavirus. The military component of the national campaign to combat coronavirus this week reported the first death since the deployment started late last month. Two soldiers on lockdown duty as part of Operation Notella, Lockup in Soto, one in Gauteng and another in Pumalanga died in incidents involving vehicles. A reserve force soldier died after a heavy vehicle lost control, capsized and fell on him during a roadblock on the N12 south of Johannesburg on 21st of April. The second road-related soldier death happened in Akonho in Pomalanga on Saturday 18th of April. Private level gang Jeffrey Gatlane of 4th SA Infantry Battalion died on a police vehicle that overturned while in pursuit of a suspicious vehicle that did not stop at a roadblock. The Reserve Force welcomed 135 new junior officials to its ranks, with by far the majority coming through its University Reserve Training Program. 112 of these were about to be commissioned as lieutenants are in the SA Army Reserve Force and three are SA Navy, who will carry out the rank sub-lieutenant. The remaining newly minted officers are 11 from the part-time ranks of Armour Formation, with the last nine earning their commissions 
through other courses. A reserve force statement has it that the concept of voluntary part-time military training for registered students at academic institutions is a recognized practice in a number of countries. The SA National Defense Force followed suit in 2005 when the South African Military Health Service launched a pilot program in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal to recruit talented young South African under and postgraduates for training and appointments as junior officers. Results achieved in the pilot program saw the Military Command Council approved further development of the University Reserve Training Program and roll out to the Air Force, Army and Navy in 2008. The Landward Force led the way with 60 students from the University of Free State and the Central University of Technology selected in 2011. The Air Force and Navy followed a year later with students from six other higher education institutions signing up for the University Reserve Training Program. South Africa's top soldier, General Solly Schalke, was calling those who allegedly supplied old ration packs to soldiers on lockdown duty saboteurs, whose comment follows a fraud charge laid against suppliers of ration packs for the close to 3,000 soldiers currently deployed nationally in support of police during the national state of disaster. The fraud charge was laid with an unnamed SA National Defence Force supplier when troops preparing for one of two daily meals while on deployment found that supplied ration packs had passed their use-by date. In what appears to be an obvious attempt to hide this, New stickers with new expiry dates were put on the ration packs and delivered. A statement did not give any details on how many were re-stickered ration packs were found or if any troops became ill as a result of eating from them. A case was opened with the military police who appointed a dedicated team to investigate. Those found to be on the wrong side of the law must face the full might of the law, the Defence Force said. Schalke is reported as saying if the allegations are proven to be true, it is tantamount to sabotage of the National Defence Force's mandate to protect South Africa. The National Defence Force has taken to social media in a search for volunteers, including Reserve Force members, to boost numbers in the ongoing battle against the spread of coronavirus. A statement on Sunday, April 19th, called for volunteers across a number of disciplines. The Sunday social media statement has it that the SANDF is now calling on all South Africans to contribute to the fight against coronavirus as volunteers. It lists six scarce skills urgently wanted. They are healthcare practitioners, especially nurses and doctors, qualified chefs, qualified mechanics, qualified engineers, technical and mechanical, a combat or aviation experience, no further information is provided, and qualified seamstresses. While not confirmed, Defence Web believes seamstresses are needed to work on producing protective masks. In the same post, the SANDF appeals to the Reserve Force where soldiers with identified scarce skills are asked to contact their nearest Reserve Force office so these can be utilised serving the nation. Civilians wanting to volunteer should contact either MSKB Moregu on 012-399-5023 or 082-884-9763 or MS Zedi Masondo on 012-339-5426 or 084-466-8992. In addition to full name and identity number, prospective volunteers should indicate where they reside and supply details of qualification slash scare skill to ensure they are best utilized. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, our daily and weekly newsletters and our other social media platforms if you enjoyed the podcast. Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching. Stay safe during the lockdown and we'll see you next week.